All right, you guys, I'm here to show you what I have done so far. So when the guy that installed the machine left, I started practicing, as you can see on the previous um, clip, how to make circles. And you guys, I swear, I thought I was never gonna get, be able to make a, an actual circle. Especially the big ones are really difficult to do. When they're small, they're a little bit easier. But those big ones are a little bit more difficult. But I kept practicing and practicing and practicing and I'm like, I'm just gonna finish this. So, let me show you what I did. This was that first practice piece. And I was able to write my name and a few things over here. And so I decided that I wanted to go, I don't know if with this light you can see, but I'm gonna post pictures. So I just made lines at first and I started doing the circles and then I just started doing the circles because I didn't want to do the lines anymore. And I just started doing them side by side. I had done a few things over here before and I just went over it. On the, th this uh, was the uh, pantograph that it came with, which I did really bad with it. And then this one over here are some stippling that I did. The stippling are not too bad, but um, I noticed that I, that I get really bored doing stippling throughout the quilt. So this one was my first one. I bound it and everything because I want to keep it as a reminder. And I want to see my progress. So that's one. Then I didn't want a quilt anymore on a white piece of fabric or a plain piece of fabric. I wanted to, oh, and I tried to do some feathers. Let's see if you can see that. I tried to do some feathers also uh, that turned out really, really bad. You gotta look, look at that. That's that. Then I had a piece top that you probably, if you're following me, you probably already seen this one that I had it for, I don't know, probably like a year and a half on my things to do. And I quilted this one. It's not um, too big, it's pretty small. But I started doing circles on the side. On this one, I have the batting that came with the machine. They give you this piece of fabric and um, they gave me the batting. The batting was polyester, so it was really lofty. It's not my kind of batting. I don't like polyester. So, especially you guys here, it gets a lot of static with the polyester uh, when I get it out of the dryer. So I try not to get anything that is polyester because I don't like to get shocked. So here, this is the one that I did for my grandbaby. So I finally completed this one. So here I decided that I wanted to practice the circles again over here on the border. Then I went and started doing lines with the rulers. I had no control over the, the ruler. It was just sliding everywhere. I didn't record this part, but this is the way it came out. So I started doing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put pictures of all this pieces at the end of the video as much as I can so this was my second one then I'm like okay I think I can I have a little more control of this machine my idea is to get control because I can put a quilt a regular quilt there and go to town you know and start quilting but I wanted to look a little decent before I actually do a quilt so then I started doing this one so my little circle started looking better. Let me see if I can get it up close. Like I mentioned, I'm going to put this, I'm gonna put pictures of this. So they started looking better and I, I started connecting them through like loops. And that's the back. I'm doing the this um, bottom line for the bobbin from Superior Thread. 
and uh, that one lasts longer and is you don't see it on the back they have different colors which now that I have a long arm I'm definitely gonna get all kinds of different colors so that's and I bound all these you guys so that I can keep it then I went and started digging through my stash and I'm like I gotta have something that I can that I already have together that is small that I can practice and I remember that I had pieced this um, um, quilty box the fabric this one the Leah Day this Leah Day um, panels I had cut them already in like little squares to mix them with uh, different colors and I didn't know what to do with this but I had done a um, small quilt I had done this little small quilt and I started using uh, a different and I was also testing threads so all these pieces I was testing uh, the different kind of threads thin thicker um, with the bottom line I also use um, cotton 100% cotton batting or uh, batting on this one and as you can see on the back the tension was pretty good and then when I was doing this I didn't like uh, the uh, color of the thread the way it was looking on the yellow I wanted to have like a high contrast so I can see my mistakes and see where I needed to work um, you know what was the what was the area that I needed more m most of the work which is probably everything so that way I can control the machine more because when I do um, like the same color thread as the fabric is a little bit more difficult to see the mistakes so when you have a high contrast of course you can see it better so you can work on that better especially on the practice quilt so this one was my fourth practice piece so when I started doing that I'm like okay I think I want to practice a lot and I had pieced a panel fabric way before um, I got my machine by the way I have not bound this and I'm going to show you up close videos of this one because this one uh, I did record with a camera and that's another thing I'm trying to figure out how to put a camera there that I can record this one is not bound yet and you're going to be able to see lots of uh, pictures and videos of this one at the end because I was able to record it a lot more I was not so like excited about finishing and I like when I was doing those I I, I didn't want to record I just wanted a quilt I didn't want to mess with cameras lights or anything like that so anyway I did this one you guys this one is big it's for my bed it's big and I love the way it turned out and I the only backing I had and it's heavy too I used the batting that came with the um, long arm which is 80 20 80 percent um, cotton and 20 percent polyester and so I used the backing for Allison glass and I look that's the only one that I had and I love it because it's really nice quality fabric on the back this one I was playing with the tension fold this because this this when I don't know if I can wash this on my washing machine because it's heavy when it gets wet I'm sure it's gonna get even heavier I take it and I have to take it to the laundromat so anyway like I mentioned when I was I think I met I mentioned this in one of the other videos that I'm gonna have ahead um, my um, machine got jammed because I didn't put the little tail like the same thing when you do your other quilting you have to bring up the thread but I'll tell you that later so it got jammed and I had to, all these issues but I play with all kinds of different threads with this one too I use um, thinner thicker threads different um, br not brands because I use the same superior thread but they have different ones like Omni like that one they came with a machine and the ones that I had and so 
I ended up using the one that came with the machine Omni I really like that one it looks really nice on the quilt so after carrying this I'm out of breath so anyway you guys I hope you enjoy the the this video I'm super excited with my machine as you can see I have received today which is uh, September 6 I received my panel from Natalia Bonner and I'm going to do the stitch along that she has going on because I want to practice ruler work and all that good stuff I'm super excited and I'm gonna be uploading uh, things on Instagram and attaching um, you know the hatch, hatch whatever thingy for for the Instagram hashtag or something uh, so if you want you can follow me over there also uh, the Instagram and I'm gonna put the link below for Instagram so you guys I can tell you now that I have definitely lost the fear for the machine I want to go ahead and quilt now everything I still have I have like three quilt tops there that I'm going to quilt but I want to get a little practice on the ruler and um, after I do this panel I'm probably going to upload one of my quilts and I'll show you that process anyway you guys let's go let's get on with the video because this one has been long I didn't think I was going to take so long doing this little section but I'll show you uh, the other ones when I quilt this one and pictures of everything Alright you guys, so I'm going to quilt a little bit so you guys can see from a distance what it looks like.
Now I'm gonna do feathers that way, this way, and this way. So my friends, these are the last blocks that I have to quilt and I'm going to tell you, you guys, that it has been a learning process. That's everything, you know. So first of all, I had to unroll this like three times in order to get it straight on the leaders. Then um, I had the biggest problem with the tension. Actually what happened was that you're supposed to pull that tail on of the thread so that way it doesn't jam any jam and so I, apparently i couldn't get the needle out up so anyway i had a problem where i guess it bent the bobbin case or something because i was going really slow so it didn't really damage anything except for the bobbin case and after that i was having the biggest problem with my tension so fine, I, I figured it out because I was doing the, the toa and I was it was jerky when I was pulling the thread. So, and I put the other bobbin case, the new one, and then it was smooth. So that's how I figured out it was, the bobbin case had been uh, bent, slightly bent some apparently, but it made a difference in my tension. So anyway, after I was done with that and I finally fixed the tension on, on my machine, Everything was smooth and the stitches look good on the back and on the front. So everything was perfect. So I've been practicing um, different designs. I started with some designs in the beginning and I started doing like um, echoing the circle and I don't have the rulers for that. So you need to have the right rulers and right tools in order to do the correct design. If not, you get frustrated because I have this little this um where is it anyway i have this tiny little ruler that doesn't work for for that so i switch i change my designs and now i'm on the last blocks oh another thing these blocks are like 14 inches big so i have to do them in sections i had to do um, half of it and then the other half and the same thing with this up here so i had to do like the block in half but it's uh, such a fun process learning all these things you guys so i'm going to i'm going to put post pictures of the quilt after it was finished and i'm going to point the things like the tension issues that i had on the back the different designs that i changed so overall i'm super excited i ha i have lost the fear of the machine I would say like a 95% I still get a little uh, a little scared once in a while but hopefully the more I quilt the more um, I'll get comfortable with it this I made this this is like a panel quilt so I made these panels before I got my long arm knowing that, I, that this was going to be like a practice quilt so I put this it was like 40 something wide and so I attached them together with one of these little rows but I'll show you pictures of all that so these are panels and I wanted to use them so that I can get um, a grip on my machine and learn how to guide it so I went around the dock and also around this little this little ones over here are so difficult because they're so small so but that's good that I was uh, I still didn't I still go out the, outside the line and I can't just get it go, go in that line and I've done many 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 of them but anyway you guys I hope you enjoy this quick tutorial and it's not a tutorial it's kind of like my process and learning this machine I love it I have it with the needle down so I cannot push it this way but I love it I'm so happy that I got it I st I'm still like I don't regret at all getting the 18 inch throw even though this uh, blocks I had to do it partially um, I can only go so far if I'm going to be doing it by hand so I'm comfortable with that I really like it I don't regret the size of the frame at all so you guys 
thank you so much for watching i hope that you like this quick video maybe not so quick but i hope you like this video and don't forget to like share subscribe and come on back wait for the pictures so you can see the pictures of all these quilts that i made in the oh by the way i think i made i did all this and i don't remember exactly how many days i've quilt i probably practice uh every single day since i got my machine but it's been a few days that i haven't been able to get uh on quilting but the hours that the computer says that i've been quilting has been like 12 hours with including the bigger quilt so I'm super excited and I just cannot wait to get on there and give it a lot more hours. So anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to come on back. Bye. It's still partially on the frame. I'm just unrolling it slowly, see if I missed anything. If I did, I can roll it back and finish it. So, let me see if you can see. This way you don't see it that well. It's so bright. All right, you guys. So as you can see, I just took my quilt off the frame and I changed my mind throughout the quilt. Up here is the first quilt, the first block I quilted. <clears throat> so because I was not sure on how to load it, even though they showed me, um, I was supposed to load this, the top lower than the batting, but I didn't. So I figured out the hard way that now I have to trim this part over here, which actually is pretty good because it came out really bad. <clears throat> so I couldn't do what I wanted to do, which was to make like half circles on and half circle on this bottom. And so then I decided, okay, I want to make feathers and that didn't work out that well, as you can see. So here we have almost like the same kind of thing. And when I was doing these feathers, I was making them one side coming down the spine and coming starting from the bottom. And I really wanted to do them in every direction. So I decided I want to go ahead and practice that and see if I was able to learn. And I did. They, I still got to practice on how to make them look pretty. So here is, let me see if I can show you this. They are not looking that great. They're looking actually pretty awful. But I keep practicing, I didn't give up. And Bella is already using the quilt. Bella, you like this quilt, Bella? <laughs> Then I change. So then I, I wanted to do like a stippling all around the block, as you can see there. And I, so like I was saying before my car got fooled, um, I was doing the stippling all around the outside of the block, like outside the circle inside the block. And I got bored really, really fast with those stippling. So I decided I wanted to do the lines. The lines around the, the circle was, I liked it, but I didn't have the, I don't have the right tools for it. I had this little ruler that didn't work out. So I did three. 
and I'm like, I will never finish. It's gonna come out all weird, so I stopped doing that. Then I decided to do this design, so I this one right here. Let's see if I can find you a better one. This one. If you can see Drubera's legs. <laughs> and I went with that one. So now that you've seen the beginning of the first blocks, I'll show you the practice. Oh my god. And this one, you guys, was so funny to do because I couldn't figure it out how to go around those little um, flowers or leaves that would stay in the line. It was really difficult to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, roll that quilt back up so you can see the last row. So these are the last two rows, you guys. So look at the difference between the first one. Not a big, big, big difference, but at least I knew what I was doing. I knew what I wanted to do, not what I was doing. I knew what I wanted to do in the beginning. Because that border threw me off, I completely lost, you know, what I wanted to do. So then I decided, okay, I'll just do feathers on each side of the quilt. And then I knew that I wanted to do these things over here. I was not sure yet about this part over here. So I ended up doing the little pebbles. And that one I really like. I really like the little pebbles on the center. But I thought about that at the end. So that's what I did for each one of them. See, for the for I think if I would have started with these pebbles I probably would have practiced a lot more but I thought about it at the end I'm really happy with the way it turned out you guys and I just can't believe that I did this it looks so nice I have one of the lights the main light off so that you guys can see you know the dimension of the the texture of the quilting <sighs> but I'm just super happy with the way it turned out I'm gonna turn the lights on to see maybe you guys can still see it if it looks like um like you can see it I'll record it if not this is it this is what it looks like and now I'm gonna bind it and um, that's it and I'll have a quilt <laughs>